For this LMC TV community conversation, we're talking about COVID-19 and how to protect, protect yourself and the community. I'm joined by infectious disease doctor, Ashita Batavia, who happens to be a Larchmont resident. So thank you for joining us, Ashita. We really appreciate it. We've been warned that this is gonna be a bad week for COVID-19. What does that mean and what should we be doing? Yeah, well, first of all, Maura, thanks for having me on your show. It's really nice to be here. Um, and your question is a really good one. I think it's on a lot of people's minds. We're seeing the numbers from the CDC and the projections, and this week is supposed to be even harder. Um, as somebody who's on the front lines and worked last night, my shift was supposed to end at 11 p.m. and I was there till 2 a.m. There was just that much to do. Um, I can't imagine what busier looks like, but I'm about to find out. And I think from the standpoint of people in the community, I think that this is something where, you know, we're in a moment which we don't really understand and we should reflect on that and do the same things we've been doing to stay safe. So social distancing comes into play. Um, the new guidance from the CDC about wearing masks comes into play. And it shouldn't really change the precautions that we should already be taking. So let's go back to this social distancing. That's really staying yeah. away from everyone as, as best you can, other than the people in your home other than the people in your home. That's an important caveat, unless they're driving you crazy, in which case go to a different room. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's really the, the heart of it, is to stay six to 10 feet away from other people at all times. And the mask guidance is intended as an add-on to that to protect us. So the masks, these are not medical grade masks. Um, they're just cloth masks for the most part that you can make. I know that you have a couple of very yeah. fashionable I ones. Yes, I made one using a, uh, a smaller scarf with elastic hair ties. I did. <laughs> um, and then a friend yeah. had made one for me with elastic ties. <laughs> well, the idea is you wear that mask as well. So in addition to keeping the distance, the mask will prevent you from sharing secretions that could potentially be infectious. Because keep in mind, people can spread the disease before they even show symptoms. And it also has some lesser advantage of pr protecting you from other people's um, secretions that could be potentially infectious. As I read the CDC guidance, it was to wear a mask when you were in more of an enclosed space, like the supermarket or you know, the drugstore or something like that. Should you be wearing it when you go out for a walk? I think that at this point, it would I'm not, I thought that the CDC guidance was that in general, in public, you should be wearing the mask. So I would encourage people to do that if they're comfortable, but certainly in spaces where it's a grocery store and you might not be able to um, control the proximity of the people who are shopping around you. Okay. Look, and I'm going to talk about some very practical things on the mask, because as you saw mm -hmm. that I made one and I ha have one. Um, I wear glasses. My glasses fog up with the mask and it ends up making me touch my face more as well as not being able to see. Are there, you know, is there a practical advice on how to deal with that? Yeah, I think there are a couple of, you know, things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. So first of all, just make sure that you figure out that problem before you're in the grocery store so that you're not touching your face in the grocery store. So maybe do a test drive of walking around the house for about 15, 20 minutes and see what needs to be tweaked or adjusted. And potentially, um, in your case, the, the nose bridge, so pinching over here and making sure it's a little bit more snug so you're not getting as much air coming up um, from your exhale is useful. Um, another tip that I gave a friend of mine who said that she had to be out, she was helping people direct traffic for food donations for vulnerable people in our community. And she was asking me, I'm, I'm nervous about being out. How do I do the mask thing? I said, you know, the, the same thing, wear the mask. She has glasses as well. I told her one of my personal tips is, is you tie your hair back and you try to get all the wisps out of the way. Because I don't know if I very absentmindedly will touch my hair in the course of a day. But if it's pulled back, then that decreases the chances and that's less touching your face when you're out and about. So that's another small tip that you can, you can try. What about how do you get a mask on a kid, particularly a little kid? 
Yeah, that's a really tough one. Um, I don't, I don't have a good solution that I think depends on the kid. Um, we have not been letting our young ones go further than our yard, to be perfectly honest. They can go for a little walk up and down the street. We try to get them to wear the mask while they're doing their walk. But if they're not going to do it, then we try not to and we keep it a very limited radius. It's harder because she's four and she knows more than I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> As a practical matter, again, you go to the grocery store, you've worn your gloves, you've been careful, you've got your mask on, you throw out your gloves, but you still have stuff that's been out in public. Is that really a concern that the can of vegetables you grab might have, or the milk container might have germs that could be transferred, or even the handle of the grocery bag? That's a great question, and it's a, it's a tough question, to be honest. So the mat, there, there's two parts to it. So the first part is the, the, the glove question, which I think is a really good thing that you're pointing at. And that's something that a lot of healthcare workers have noticed watching video clips too, is if you have the, the gloves on your hand and then the gloves touch everything and then the gloves touch your face, they're not really doing much of anything. It might as well have been your bare hands. Um, but if you are being careful with the gloves, then maybe there is some value to it, but that is a very hard thing and you have to be very conscientious about doing that. So I don't, I, there is not currently any recommendation for widespread glove use when you're in the store and so forth. What is more important is washing your hands after you come home and making sure that you're keeping your hands clean and not then touching your face. Um, in terms of picking up a container that somebody may have handled, there is a risk, but generally speaking, the CDC and the guidance and the public health expert community feel as though that is a very minor pathway by which people are getting infected. A lot more of it is being too close to individuals that, have, um, that are asymptomatic and spreading infection that way, or people that are potentially symptomatic, just they're spreading it person to person more than person to object to person. So we don't need to wipe down our groceries when we come home? I don't think that there's any recommendation for that to be you. happening at this time. Um, do I wipe down my groceries? I know that my my husband is a little bit more of a particular kind of guy and he's already like I'm testing his patients by being in the hospital as much as I am, but he understands it. So I kind of let him handle the groceries however he wants to. Um, he's upstairs with the kids. So I'm not going to pull him down to answer them. What about mail? Should we be wiping off our mail? I, you know, I don't think that that's necessary. I think if you feel more comfortable doing it, there's no harm to it, but I don't think that it's necessary or something that I feel like people need to start doing. So what would be a telltale symptom that would make you think that you had COVID-19? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, a lot of what we've been seeing are fevers. Higher, huh? like what level of fever? We've seen all of them. So there are very minor cases that have low grade fevers. There are more severe cases where they're spiking very high temperatures up to 103, 104. So there's a spectrum of what this disease looks like. There's no you know, boundary lines on those numbers um, per se. And in terms of other symptoms, cough, but although some people don't have cough, shortness of breath, some people don't have shortness of breath. And there is a small subset of patients where it is just a lot of diarrhea and GI type symptoms with a fever where there's not necessarily very much respiratory. That seems to be much more of an exception than the rule, but we are seeing a wide variety of um, presentations that are turning out to be positive COVID. So at what point should one to contact their doctor? I think if, you, if it's on your mind and you're showing symptoms and you're concerned, it's worth a phone call. And I don't think that that means you go into your doctor, you go into the emergency room, but you should definitely reach out and have a conversation with a medical professional who can help guide you. And the reason I say that is because each patient is different and each patient has an entire medical history behind them and risk factors. And so the threshold for what you do will be individualized. And that person to make that individualized informed decision with you is really your doctor. It's it's never the doctor on, on TV, it's not me, but I want you to make sure that you're armed with the information to not have to see me in the hospital. At what point do you try, I mean, or how do you separate from your own family if you think you're, you're ill? Not yeah, that, multiple rooms that they can separate to. Yeah, I think 
part of, and, and this becomes hard. And not, this is not for our Larchmont um, neighbors who live in apartments or people in the city who live in apartments or have closer quarters. This is a very hard conversation. Um, I think the answer is you do the best that you can. So if there's an op, if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling ill, and you have your own room that you can be in with the door closed and maybe some other family member can hand off your food to you and wash hands before and after. Alternatively, you know, if you have to be in a shared space then trying to wear the mask and being mindful of what you're touching and what you're using, um, there's, it's the best that we can do right now. And that, that's what we're asking everyone. And, and really the, the hope is that it doesn't spread further than you. And that's part of what all the flattening the curve um, me, information is messaging around. You've been in the hospitals in the last few days. What are you seeing there? And how's the volume compared to how it usually is? So the volume is definitely much higher than it usually is. Instead of having a diversity of diseases that I treat in any given period of time and take care of, I am seeing a lot of the same thing over and over. There is a lot of COVID-19. And a lot of the reason for that is we are being very active about trying to do telemedicine, about trying to give patients advice and people that are not very sick, we don't want to expose them unnecessarily. So that's the, the shift in mix that we're seeing in the hospital. Okay. Uh, is what should, I'm going to give you the last word of what you really want people to know and honor as we go through the next week of this. Yeah. So what I'd like people to know is that social distancing is hard. It's really hard, especially if you have young kids at home. And even though it may look like it's all quiet on your street, the, the disconnect between being home and looking out on a peaceful street that is starting to blossom with trees and seeing what I see in the hospital is very jarring. And I hope that you stay safe and that you wash your hands, that you use the masks and you take social distancing seriously because we're all in this together. And how's your family holding up, by the way? I think they're doing okay. Um, we have our, our moments of, of tears. I think it's hard when mom has to go to work. Um, I have a seven-year-old and I've already mentioned my four-year-old, um, but I am married to a wonderful man who is just the most supportive guy and we're trying our best. It's not always pretty, but I don't know whose life is. Dr. Ashita Batavia, thank you so much for the advice and for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Maura. Thank you.